Willie? It's all right. I came back. Why? What happened? Did something happen, Willie? No, nothing happened. You didn't smash the car, did you? I said nothing happened. Didn't you hear me? Don't you feel well? Well, I'm tired to the death. I couldn't make it. I just couldn't make it, Linda. Where were you all day? You looked terrible. I got as far as a little above Yonkers. I was driving along, you understand, and I was fine. I was even observing the scenery. You can imagine me looking at scenery on the road every week of my life. But it's so beautiful up there, Linda. Trees are so thick and the sun's warm. I open the windshield and just let the warm air bathe over me. And all of a sudden, I'm going off the road. I'm telling you, I absolutely forgot I was driving. And if I'd gone the other way over the white line, I might have killed somebody. So I went on again. Five minutes later, I'm dreaming again. And I nearly... I have such thoughts. I have such strange thoughts. Willie, dear, talk to them again. There's no reason why you can't work in New York. Oh, you don't need me in New York. I'm the New England man. I'm vital in New England. But you're 60 years old, dear. They can't expect you to keep traveling every well, week. If old man Wagner was alive, I'd have been in charge of New York now. That man was a prince. He was a masterful man. But that boy of his, that Howard, he don't appreciate... And I went north the first time the Wagner Company didn't know where New England was. Well, why don't you tell those things to Howard? I will. I definitely will. Are the boys in? They're sleeping. Happy took Biff on a date tonight. That's so. He did Biff say anything when I went this morning? You shouldn't have criticized him, Willie, especially after he just got off the train. You mustn't lose your temper with him. Oh, when the hell did I lose my temper? I simply asked him, was he making any money? Is that a criticism? Well, he's finding himself, Willie. Not finding yourself at the age of 34 is a disgrace. Shh, Willie, shh. Trouble is he's lazy. Willie. Bits a lazy pup. They're sleeping, dear. Get something to eat. Go on down. Why did he come home? I'd like to know. What brought him home? I don't know, dear. I I think he's still lost, Willie. I think he's very lost. Their floorman's lost. In the greatest country in the world, a young man with such personal attractiveness gets lost. And a hard worker. There's one thing about Biff. He's not lazy. Oh, never. I'll see him in the morning. I'll have a nice talk with him. Get him a job selling. He could be big in no time. Uh, why don't you open a window in here? They're all open, dear. Where well, they've got us boxed in here. Bricks and windows, windows and bricks. We should have bought the land next door. Streets lined with cars. Not a breath of fresh air in the neighborhood. Grass doesn't grow anymore. Can't raise a carrot in the backyard. Should have been a law against apartment houses. Remember those two beautiful elm trees we had out there when I and Biff hung the swing between them? Yeah, like being a million miles from the city. Yeah, I won't fight with him anymore. If he wants to go back to Texas, let him go. He'll find his way. Sure. Certain men just don't get started till later in life. Like Thomas Edison. I think, uh, was it B.F. Goodrich? One of them was deaf. <laughs> I'll put my money on Biff. And Willie? If it's warm Sunday, we'll drive in the country and we'll open the windshield and take lunch. <laughs> no, no, the windshields don't open on the new cars. Why, you opened it today. Me? No, I didn't. Oh, isn't that peculiar? Isn't that remarkable? What, darling? A most remarkable thing. What, dear? I was thinking of the Chevy. 1928, when I had that red Chevy. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I could have sworn I was driving the Chevy today. Remember those days, Linda? The way Biff used to simonize that car? <laughs> I'm going down to the kitchen and get some milk. Close your eyes. I'll be right up. Hey, Biff. Biff, wake up. I think Pop's back. Uh, what's he doing back? Maybe he smashed up the car again. I'm getting nervous about him, you know, Biff? Yeah, his eyes are going. No, I've driven with him. He sees all right. He just he just doesn't keep his mind on it. Drove into the city with him one day last week. He stops at a green light. It turns red, and he goes. <laughs> Maybe he's colorblind. Pop, he's got the finest eye for color in the business. You know that. Well, I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah. You're not still sour on Dad, are you, Biff? He'll be all right, I guess. So why does he mock me all the time? He's not mocking Everything you. I say, there's a twist of mockery on his face. I can't get near him. He just wants you to make good, that's all. Yeah, there's one or two other things depressing him. Hey? No, but I think if you just got started. I mean, 
Well, is there any future for you out there? I tell you, Hap, I don't know what the future is. I don't know what I'm supposed to want. Well, you, you really enjoy it on a, on a farm? Are you content out there? Hap, I've had 20 or 30 different kinds of jobs since I've left home before the war, and it's always turned out the same. I just realized it lately. In Nebraska, when I herded cattle, in the Dakotas, in Arizona, now in Texas. That's why I came home now, I guess, because I realized it. You know, this, this farm I work on, it's spring there now, see, and they got about, oh, about 15 new colts. There's nothing more inspiring or beautiful than the sight of a mare in a, in a new colt. And it's cool there now, see. Texas is cool now, and it's spring. And whenever spring comes to where I am, I suddenly get the feeling, well, my God, I'm not getting anywhere. What the hell am I doing playing around with horses 28 bucks a week? I'm 34 years old. I ought to be making a future. And, and that's when I come running home. Now I get here, I don't know what to do with myself. I've always made it a point of not wasting my life. And every time I come home, I know that all I've ever done is waste my life. You're a poet. You know that, Biff? You're an idealist. Yeah, I'm mixed up very bad. Maybe I ought to get married. Maybe I ought to get stuck in or something. Maybe that's my trouble. Geez, I'm like a boy. I'm not in business. I'm not married. I'm... I'm like a boy. Are you content, Hap? You're a success, aren't you? Are you content? Hell no. Why? You're making money, aren't you? I don't know what the hell I'm working for. Sometimes I sit in my apartment all alone. And I think of the rent I'm paying, and, well, it's crazy. But then, <laughs> that's what I always wanted. My own apartment, a car, and plenty of women. Now, you take those two creatures we had tonight. Now, weren't they gorgeous? Yeah, yeah, they're the most gorgeous I've had in years. <laughs> You're going to call me a louse when I tell you this. A girl, Charlotte, I was with tonight's engaged to be married in five weeks. No kidding. Sure, the guy's in line for the vice presidency of the store. <laughs> I don't know what gets into me. Maybe I just have an overdeveloped sense of competition or something, but... Well, I went and I ruined her. And furthermore, I can't get rid of her. And he's the third executive I've done that to. Now, isn't that a crummy characteristic? And to top it all, I go to their weddings. Hey, let's go to sleep, huh? <sighs> I guess we didn't settle anything. See, I just got one idea I think I'm going to try. What's that? You remember Bill Oliver? Sure. Oliver's very big now. You want to work for him again? No, 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 no. But when I quit, he said something to me. He put his arm on my shoulder and said, Biff... If you ever need anything, come to see me. <laughs> I remember that. That sounds good. Jeez, I think I'll go see him. Because if I could get 10000 or even seven or $8,000, I could buy a beautiful ranch. Yeah, I'll bet he'd back you because he thought highly of you, Biff. I mean, they all do. You're well liked, Biff. That's why I say to come back here, we both have the apartment. And I'm telling you, Biff, any babe you want. No. With a ranch, I could do the kind of work I like and still be something. Gee, I just wonder, though. I wonder if Oliver still thinks I stole that carton of basketballs. <laughs> he probably forgot that long ago. It's almost ten years. You're too sensitive, Biff. Anyway, he didn't really fire you. Well, I think he was going to. I think that's why I quit. I was never sure whether he knew or not. Hey, Biff! You ready? Biff Walsh! You hear him? He's in the kitchen. What's he doing there? Biff, Biff, something's happened to Dad. He... He talks to himself. Yeah, I noticed that this morning. And you know something? Most of the time, he's talking to you. What's he say about me? <laughs> well, I can't make it out exactly, but I, I think the fact that you're not settled... Just want to be careful with those girls, Biff. That's all. Don't make any promises. No promises of any kind. Because a girl, you know, they always believe what you tell them. You're very young, Biff. <laughs> You're too young to be talking seriously to girls. Too young entirely, Biff. You want to watch your schooling first. Then, when you're all set, there'll be plenty of girls for a boy like you. That's all. Girls pay for you, eh? Ha! Boy, you must really be making a hit. I've been wondering why you polished the car so careful. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, uh, don't leave the hubcaps, boys. Now, Willie is no longer the in the Chevy kitchen. The he is out in the yard, in a I time mean, long past, when the trees branched over the, the house, thing. when there was Show space, sunlight, 
And his boys were young. That's it. Good work. You're doing all right, Hap. Uh Uh-uh. Biff, the first thing we got to do when we get time is clip that big branch over the house. Afraid it might fall in a storm and hit the roof. Tell you what. We get a nice rope and sling her around. And we climb up there with a couple of saws and we take her down. Soon as you finish the car, boys, I want to see you. I got a surprise for you, boys. What do you got, Pop? Hey, how's that shine, Pop? Professional, huh? Terrific, terrific job, boys. Good work, Biff. Where's the surprise, Pop? In the backseat of the car. Boy, oh, boy. Hey, what is it, Dad? Tell me, what's your book? <laughs> Never mind. So hey, what, what is it, to have? have? It's a punching bag. Oh, 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 it's got Gene's honey signature on it. Gee, how, how'd you know we wanted a punch in Well, back? that's the best thing for the timing. Hey, did you see the new football I got? What'd you get the new ball, Biff? Well, well, the coach told me to practice my pass. That's so what he gave you, ball? Well, I, I borrowed it from the locker room. Uh-uh. I want you to return yeah, that. Yeah, I told you, Pop. Uh, well, I'm bringing it back. Sure, he's got to practice with the regulation ball, doesn't he? Coach, I'll probably congratulate you on your initiative. Oh, he keeps congratulating my initiative all the time. Pop. That's because he likes you. Somebody else took that ball to be an uproar. <laughs> What's the report, boys, eh? What's the report? Yeah. Well, where did you go this time, Pop? Gee, we were lonesome for you. Lonesome, eh? <laughs> yeah, I missed you every minute. You don't say it. Tell you a secret, boys. I don't breathe this to a soul. Someday I'm going to have my own business and I'll never have to leave home anymore. Like Uncle Charlie, huh? Oh, bigger than Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie's not liked. He's liked, but he's not well liked. Yeah. <laughs> well, where did you go this time, Pop? Well, I got on the road. Went north to Providence. Met the mayor. The mayor of Providence? I was sitting in the hotel lobby. What did he say? He said, good morning. I said, you got a fine city here, mayor. Then I bought him a cup of coffee. Oh, then I went on to Waterbury. Waterbury's a fine city. Big clock city. Famous Waterbury clock. Sold a nice bill there. Gee, I'd love to go with you sometime, Pop. Soon as summer comes. Promise? You and Happy and I, and I'll show you all the towns. America's full of beautiful towns and fine, upstanding people. And they know me, boys. <laughs> oh, they know me up and down New England. The finest people. When I bring you fellas up there with me, they're going to be open sesame for all of us. Because one thing, boys, I have friends. I can park my car in any street in New England and the cops are protected like their own. <laughs> this summer, eh? Yeah, yeah. we take our bathing suits. And we'll carry your bags, Pop. Oh, oh, won't that be something? Me coming into the Boston stores with you boys carrying my bags. What a sensation. Hey, Biff, where are you? Hey, Biff, you were supposed to study with me today. Uh, hey, look at Bernard. What are you looking so anemic about, Bernard? <laughs> He's got to study, Uncle Willie. He's got Regents next week. Let's box, Bernard. Oh, look now, <laughs> will you? Hey, listen, Biff, I heard Mr. Birnbaum say if you don't start studying math, he's going to flunk you and you won't graduate. I heard him. Now, what are you talking about? With scholarships at three universities, they're going to flunk him? But I heard Mr. Birnbaum oh, say... Oh, <laughs> be a pest, Bernard. What an anemic. <laughs> okay, I'm waiting for you in my house, Bill. <laughs> hey, Bernard's not well-liked, is he? He's liked, but he's not well-liked. That's right, Pop. That's just what I mean. Bernard can get the best marks in school, you understand. But when he gets out in the business world, you understand? You're going to be five times ahead of him. <laughs> That's why I thank almighty God you're both built like Adonis's. Because, you know, in the business world, it's appearance that counts. The man who creates a personal interest is the man who gets ahead. Be liked. You'll never want... Well, take me, for instance. I never have to stand in line to see a buyer. (laughs) Willie Loman's here. That's all they have to know, and I go straight through. (laughs) Did you knock them dead, Pop? Knocked them cold in Providence, slaughtered them in Boston. Hello, dear. Sweetheart. Hey, you guys, since when do you let your mother carry wash up the stairs? Hey, grab hold that hat. Hop, hop, hop. Did you sell anything? <laughs> Did 500 gross in Providence, 700 gross in Boston? No. Wait a minute. I've got a pencil. Mm-mm. That makes your commission. 200. Oh, my God. $212. Uh, well, I, I didn't figure it yet, but... It, How much uh, did you do? Well, I... Uh, I did 180 gross in Providence. Uh, oh, no, no. It... It came to roughly 200 gross on the whole trip. 200 gross? Yeah, well, that... the trouble was that three of the stores were half closed for inventory in Boston. Otherwise, I'd have broke records. Well, it makes $70 and some pennies. That's very good. My God. $70. If business don't pick up, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, next week, you'll do better. I'll knock them dead. I'll go to Hartford. You know, I'm very well liked in Hartford. You know, Linda, the trouble is... People don't seem to take to me. Oh, don't be foolish. Oh, I know it when I walk in. <laughs> they laugh at me. Now, why? Why should they laugh at you? Don't talk that way, Willie. Well, I don't know the reason for it, but they pass me by. 
I'm not noticed. Well, you're doing wonderful, dear. You're making seventy to a hundred dollars a week. Uh, but I gotta be out of ten, twelve hours a day. Other men, I don't know why, but they do it easier. I can't seem to stop myself. I talk too much. <laughs> men ought to come in with a few words. It's one thing about Charlie. He's a man of a few words, and they respect him. <laughs> I joke too much. Darling. I'm not dressing to advantage, maybe. Really, darling, you're the handsomest man in the world. <laughs> oh, no, no, Linda. To me, you are the handsomest. <laughs> and the boys, Willie. Few men are idolized by their children the way you are. And often when remembering Linda, a certain woman would come to mind. A woman he had met in Boston. me. Oh, I think you're such a wonderful man. That's why I picked you. You picked me, eh? Mm -hmm, I did. I've been sitting at that desk day in and day out, watching all the salesmen go by. But you, you've got such a sense of humor. We do have such a good time together, don't we? Sure, sure. Why do you have to go now? It's almost two o'clock. Ah, come on in. My sisters would be scandalized. When will you be back? Two weeks about. Will you come up again? Sure thing. You're so sweet. Such a kidder. See you the next time I come to Boston. And I'll put you right through to the bike. All right. Well, bottoms up. Oh, <laughs> you just kill me, will you? Kill me. Oh, thanks for the stockings. I love a lot of stockings. Good night. Good night. Keep your paws open. Oh, Willie. <laughs> Miss Man, <laughs> you've got no reason to. I'll be... make it all up to you, Linda. I'll. Oh, there's nothing to make up, darling. You're doing fine, better than What's ever. What's that? What are you doing? Well, I was just mending my stockings. They're so expensive. I won't have you mending stockings in this house. Now throw them out. Where is he? If he doesn't oh, study. Oh, you give him the answers, Bernard. I do, but I can't honor Regents. That's a state exam. They're liable to arrest Where me. is he? Where is he? I'll whip him. You better give back that football, Willie. It's not nice. Biff, where is he? Why is he taking everything? He's too rough with the girls, Willie. All the mothers are afraid of him. I'll whip him. He's I'll driving whip a car. Him. Him. <laughs> Shut up. All the mothers are afraid Shut of him. Shut up. If he doesn't want the daddy, he's going to get out of here. That's right, Willie. You've just yes, got it. Get out of him. You want him to be a worm like Bernard? He's got spirit, personality loaded with a load of... What's he stealing? He's giving it back, isn't he? Why is he stealing? What did I tell him? Well, I never told him anything but decent things. Pop, hey, Pop. Huh? Oh. Well, what are you doing here in the kitchen? Thought you were asleep. I heard you from upstairs. Me? No, I was just having some milk. Let's go to bed now, Pop. Come on. Hey, what brought you back tonight? Huh? Oh, I, I got an awful scare, Hap. Nearly hit a kid in Yonkers. God. Why didn't I go to Alaska with my brother Ben that time? Ben. Oh, that man was a genius. That man was success incarnate. What a mistake. He begged me to go. Well, there's no use. Hi, oh, oh, guys. That was a man started with the clothes on his back and ended up with diamond mines. Boy, someday I'd like to know how he did it. What's the mystery? Man knew what he wanted, went out and got it. Walks into a jungle, comes out at the age of 21, and he's rich. The world's an oyster, but you don't crack it open on a mattress. Now, Pop, I told you, I'm going to retire you for life. Ha! Retire me for life on your $70 a week. You women in your car and your apartment, you retire me for life. I couldn't get past Yonkers today. Where are you guys? Where are you? The woods are burning. I can't drive a car. Everything all right? Yeah, Charlie, everything. What's the matter? I heard some noise. I thought something happened. Can't we do something about these walls? You sneeze in here, and in my house, hats blow off. Let's go to bed, Pop. Come on. No, you go ahead. I'm not tired at the moment. Take it easy, huh? Yeah. What are you doing up? Couldn't sleep good. I had a heartburn. Well, you don't know how to eat. I eat with my mouth. Come yeah. on, let's shoot. Tie you out a little. All right. You got cards? Yeah, I got them. What are you doing home? Uh, I had a little trouble with the car. Oh. I 
I'd like to take a trip to California. Mm, don't say. You want a job? I got a job. I told you that. What the hell are you offering me a job for? Don't get insulted. Well, don't insult me. I don't see no sense to it. You don't have to go on this way. You got a good job. Why do you keep coming in here? You want me to go? No, oh, ch- ch- Charlie. But I can't understand it. He's going back to Texas again. Now, what the hell is that? Let him go. But I got nothing to give him, Charlie. I'm clean. I'm clean. He won't starve. None of them starve. Forget about yeah, it. Then what have I got to remember? You take it too hard. The hell with it. When a deposit bottle is broken, you don't get your nickel back. I'm getting awful tired, Ben. Good. Keep playing. You'll sleep better. Did you call me Ben? I only have a few minutes, William. Hey, that's funny. For a second there, you reminded me of my brother Ben. You never heard from him again, huh? Since that time? Uh, uh, didn't Linda tell you? A couple of weeks ago, we got a letter from his wife in Africa. He died. There's just one opportunity I had with that man. If I'd gone with him to Alaska that time, everything would have been... Ben! I've waited for you for so long. What's the answer? How'd you do it? (laughs) There's a story in that. Where's Dad? You followed him, didn't you? How'd you get started? Well, I don't know how much you remember. Well, I was just a baby, of course, when you left, only three or four years old. Three years and 11 months. What a memory, Ben. I have many enterprises, William, and I have never kept books. I remember I was sitting under a wagon in, was it Nebraska? South Dakota. Uh Uh-huh. And I gave you a bunch of wildflowers. Oh, sure. I remember you walking away down some open road. (laughs) I was going to find father in Alaska. Hey, where is he? At that age, William, I had a very faulty view of geography. I discovered after a few days that I was heading due south. So instead of Alaska, I ended up in Africa. Africa? You hear, Linda? Africa? The Gold Coast. Principally diamond mines. Diamond mines? Yes, my dear, but I only have a few minutes. Oh, no, no, no. Bo- boys! Boys! Up! 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 Hey, hop. listen to this. This is your Uncle Ben, a great man. Tell my boys, Ben. Why, boys, when I was 17, I walked into the jungle. And when I was 21, I walked out. And by God, I was rich. Uh, You see what I've been talking about? The greatest things can happen. I have an appointment in Ketchikan Tuesday week. Uh, No, 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 Ben. Uh, Please tell about Dad. I want my boys to hear. I want them to know what kind of stock they spring from. All I remember is a man with a big beard. I was in Mama's lap, sitting around an open fire, and there was some kind of high music. His flute. He played the flute. Sure, the flute. That's right. Father was a very great... And a very wild-hearted man. We would start in Boston. He'd toss the whole family into the wagon. And then he'd drive the team right across the country, through Ohio and Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, all the western states. And we'd stop in the towns and he'd sell the flutes that he'd made on the way. (laughs) Great inventor, Father. With one gadget, he made more in a week than a man like you could make in a lifetime. That's just the way I'm bringing them up, Ben. Rugged, well-liked, all-around boys. Go right over to where they're putting up that new apartment house and get some sand. We're going to rebuild the entire front stoop right now. You watch this, Ben. Yes, sir, on the double hat. Oh, Willie, if they steal any more from that building, the watchman will put the cops on them. <laughs> ben, you should have seen the lumber they brought back last week. At least a dozen six-by-tens worth all kinds of money. Oh, I give him hell, you understand. But I have a couple of fearless characters there. Fine, fine. Well, now I must be going. It was an honor and a pleasure to meet you, Linda. Have a nice trip. And good luck with your... What do you do, William? Uh, selling. Yeah. Well, I'll stop by on the way back to Africa. Oh, can't you stay a few days? Gee, you're just what I need, then. Because I... Well, I have a fine position here, but I... Well, Dad left when I was such a baby that I never had a chance to talk to him. And I still feel kind of temporary about myself. I'll be late from a train. Hubba Ben, my boys. Can't we talk? They go into the jaws of hell for me, but you see, I... William, you're being first rate with your boys. Outstanding, manly chaps. Oh, Ben, that's good to hear. Because, you know, sometimes I'm afraid I'm not teaching them the right kind of... A Ben. How should I teach them? William, when I walked into the jungle, I was 17. When I walked out, I was 21. And by God, I was rich. Was rich. 
That's just the spirit I want to imbue them with. To walk into a jungle. I was right. I was right. Well, I was right. Willie, dear, aren't you coming to bed? I, I was right. Did you, did you have something to eat? It's very late. Who's that you were talking to? Hmm? Uh, Charlie. He must have left. Uh, we were playing cards, I guess. I dozed off. You coming up? Come up to bed. Uh, I'll take a walk. No, you're, you're in your slippers, Willie. I was right, I was. What a man. There was a man worth talking to. But you're in your slippers, right. Willie. What's he doing out there? Shh. Go on up, Biff. Go to bed. God almighty, Mom. How long has he been doing Don't this? he'll hear well, you. Well, what the hell's the matter with him? It'll pass by morning. Well, shouldn't we do anything? My dear, you should do a lot of things. But there's nothing to do, so go to sleep. You too, happy. She never heard him so loud. Well, come around more often. You'll hear him. Why don't you ever write to me about this, Mom? How would I write to you? The past three months, you've had no address. Well, I, I, I was on the move. But you know I thought about you all the time. You know that, don't you, Mom? I know, dear, I know. But he likes to have a letter. Just to know that there's still a possibility for better things. He's not like this all the time, is he? When you come home, he's always the worst. Why are you so hateful to each other? Why is that? Well, I'm, I'm not hateful, You know, Mom, sooner I... come in the door than you're fighting. I don't know why. I, I mean to change. I'm trying, Mom. You understand? Oh, he admires Pop. If, if you don't have any feelings for him, then you can't have any feelings for me. Sure I can, Mom. No. You can't just come to see me. Because I love him. He's the dearest man in the world to me. And I won't have anyone make him feel unwanted, low and blue. You've got to make up your mind. There's no leeway anymore. Either he's your father, and you pay him that respect, or you're not to come here anymore. I know he's not easy to get along with. Nobody knows that better than me. Hey, hey Pippo! What the hell's the matter with him? Don't, don't go near Stop him. Stop making excuses for him. He always, always wiped the floor with you. Never had an ounce of respect for he's him. He's always had respect for him. What the hell do you know about Just it? Just don't call him crazy. He's got no character. Charlie wouldn't do this, not in his own house. Spewing out that vomit from his mind. Charlie never had a coat. People are worse off than Willie Loman. Believe me, I've seen them. Then make Charlie your father. You can't do that, can you? I don't say he's a great man. Willie Loman never made a lot of money. His name was never in the papers. He's not the finest character that ever was. But he's a human being. And a terrible thing is happening. So attention must be paid. Not to be allowed to fall into his grave like an old dog. Attention. Attention must finally be paid to such a person. You call him crazy. I, I no. A lot of people think he's lost his balance. But you don't have to be very smart to know what his trouble is. A man is exhausted. Sure. A small man can be just as exhausted as a great man. He works for a company 36 years this March. Opens up unheard of territories to their trademark. Now in his old age, they take away his salary. I didn't know that, Mom. You never ask, my dear. Now that you get your spending money someplace else, you don't trouble your head with it. But I gave you money last... Last Christmas, $50. To fix the hot water, it cost ninety-seven fifty. For five weeks, he's been on a straight commission. Like a beginner, an unknown. Those ungrateful... Are they any worse than his sons? When he brought them business, when he was young, they were glad to see him. Now his old friends, the old buyers that loved him so, always found some order to hand him in a pinch. They're all dead, retired. He used to be able to make six or seven calls a day in Boston. Now he takes his valises out of the car, puts them back again, takes them out again, and he's exhausted. Instead of walking, he talks now. He drives 700 miles. When he gets there, no one knows him anymore. No one welcomes him. What goes through a man's mind driving 700 miles home without having earned a cent? Why shouldn't he talk to himself? Why? When he has to go to Charlie and borrow $50 a week and pretend to me that it's his pay? How long? You see what I'm sitting here and waiting for? You tell me he has no character. A man who never worked a day, but for your benefit. When does he get the medal for that? Is this his reward? To turn around at the age of 63 and find his sons who he loved better than his life. One of philandering bum. Hey, Mom. That's all you are, my baby. And you. 
What happened to the love you had for him, Biff? You were such pals. How you used to talk to him on the phone every night. How lonely he was till he could get home to you. All right, Mom, all right. I'll live here in my room and I'll get a job. I'll keep away from him, that's all. No, Biff. You can't stay here and fight all the time. He threw me out of this house. Remember that. Well, why did he do that? I never knew why. Because I know he's a fake, and he doesn't want anybody around. Who knows? Why a fake? In what way? What do you mean? Just don't lay it all at my feet. It's between me and him. That's all I've got to say. I'll chip in from now on. He'll settle for half my paycheck. He'll be all right. I'm going to bed. He won't be all right. I hate this city, and I'll stay here. Now, what do you want? He's dying, Biff. Why is he dying? He's been trying to kill himself. How? I live from day to day. What are you talking about? Last month. Oh, boys, it's so hard to say a thing like this. He's only a big, stupid man to you. But I tell you, there's more good in him than in many other people. I was looking for a fuse. The lights blew, and I went down in the cellar and... Behind the fuse box, it just happened to fall out. Was a length of rubber pipe, just short. No kidding. There was an attachment on the end of it. I knew right away, and sure enough, on the bottom of the hot water heater, there's a new little nipple on the gas pipe. Oh, that jerk. Did you have it taken off? I, I'm ashamed to. How can I mention it to him? Every day I go down and take away that little rubber pipe, but when he comes home, I put it back again. How can I insult him that way? I don't know what to do. I live from day to day, boys. I tell you, I know every thought of his mind. It sounds so old-fashioned and silly, but he put his whole life into you, and you've turned your backs on him. Biff, I swear to God, Biff, His life is in your hands. How do you like that damn fool? All right, pal, all right. It's all settled now. I've been remiss. I know that, Mom. But now I'll stay. I'll I'll swear to you. I'll apply myself. It's just that, Mom, you see, I I don't fit in business. It's not that I won't try. I'll try. I swear I'll make good. Sure you will, Biff. Sure you will. The trouble with you in business was you never tried to please people. Yeah, I know. Like when you worked for Harrison's. Bob Harrison said you were tops. Then you go and do some damn fool thing like whistling whole songs in the elevator like a comedian. Well, so what? I like to whistle sometimes. You don't raise a guy to a responsible job who whistles in the elevator. In a business world, some of them think you're crazy. Screw the business world. They laughed at that for years. You know why? Because we don't belong in this nuthouse of a city. We should be mixing cement on some open plane or, or carpenters. A carpenter's allowed to whistle. Hiya, Pop. They laugh at me, eh? Go to Filene's, go to the Hub, go to Slattery's Boston. Call out the name Willie Loman and see what happens. Big shot. All right. Big. All right. Why do you always insult me? I, I didn't say a word. Did I say a word? He Mom? didn't say anything, Willie. All right. Good night. Good night. Willie, dear, he just decided... If you decide... get tired hanging around tomorrow, I'll paint the ceiling I put up in the living room. I, I'm leaving early tomorrow. He's going to see Bill Oliver, Pop. Oliver? For what? Uh, he, he always said he'd stake me, and I'd like to go into business, so maybe I can take him up on it. Isn't that wonderful? Don't interrupt. What's wonderful about it? Fifty men in the city of New York could stake him. Sporting goods? I, I guess so. I know something about it. Oh, I... oh, 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 he knows something about it. You know, sporting goods better than spoiling, for God's sake. How much are you giving him? I, I don't know. I didn't even see him yet. Well, what are you talking about? Well, all I said was I was going to see him. That's ah, all. Counting your chickens again? Oh, jeez, I'm going to sleep. Don't curse in this house. Since when did you get so wait clean? Minute, don't use that language of me. I won't have it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I got an idea. I got a feasible idea. Come here, Biff. Let's talk this over now. Let's talk some sense here. When I was down in Florida last time, I thought of a great idea to sell sporting goods. Just come back to me. You, you and me, Biff. We got a line. The Loman line. We train a couple of weeks and we put on a couple of exhibitions. You That's see? an idea. No, no, wait. We, we, we form two basketball teams, see, or, or two water polo teams, and we play each other. It's a million dollars worth of publicity. Two, two brothers, you see? The Loman brothers. Displays in the Royal Palms and all the hotels. Banners over the ring and the basketball court. Loman brothers. 
Maybe we could sell sporting goods. That's a one million dollar idea. Marvelous. Now, I'm in great shape as far as that's concerned. And the beauty of it is, Biff, it wouldn't be like a business. We'd be out playing ball again. Yeah. A million dollars. Yeah. And you wouldn't get fed up with it, Biff. It'd be the family again. There'd be the old honor and comradeship. Lick the world. You two guys together got absolutely like the civilized world. Yeah, I'll see all of it tomorrow. Happy, you know, if we could work that out. Maybe things are beginning uh, to don't work. Don't interrupt. Now, Biff, walk in very serious. Money's to pass. Be quiet. Fine. Serious. I see great things for you kids. I think your troubles are all over. But remember, start big and you end big. Ask for 15. How much can I ask for? Oh, gee, I don't oh, know. Oh, don't say gee. Gee's a boy's word. A man walking in for $15,000 does not say gee. Uh, Ten, I think. Ah, uh, no, nah, don't be modest. You always start it too low. Walk in with a big laugh and don't look worried. Start off with a couple of good stories to lighten things up. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Because personality always wins the day. Oliver always thought the highest of him. Will you let me talk? Don't yell at her, Pop, will you? I was talking, wasn't I? I don't like you yelling at her all the time, and I'm telling you that's all. Well, what, are you taking over this house? Willie, dear, he didn't... Don't take his side all the time. Damn it! Stop yelling at her! (laughs) Well, it might best to Bill Oliver. He may remember me. Now. Now, what did you have to start that for? You see how sweet he was as soon as you talked, hopefully? Come up and say goodnight to him, Biff. Don't let him go to bed that way. Yeah, come on, Biff. Let's fuck him up. Please, dear. Just say goodnight. Take so little to make him happy. Willie, dear, lie down. Rest. I'm I'm just wondering if Oliver will remember him. You think he might? Remember him? Now, what's the matter with you? You crazy? If he'd stayed with Oliver, he'd be on top by now. Wait till Oliver gets a look at him. Ha! You don't know the average caliber anymore. Average young man today has a caliber of zero. Greatest thing in the world for him was to bum around. Come in, Bill. Glad to hear it, boy. <laughs> He wanted to say goodnight to you, sport. Yeah, knock him dead, boy. What do you want to tell me? Um, just take it easy, Pop. Good night. Oh, and if anything falls off the desk while you're talking, you know, a package or anything like that, don't you pick it up. They have office boys for that. I'll make a big breakfast. Will you let me finish? Tell him you were in the business out west. Not farm work. All right. I think everything... And is- don't undersell yourself. Nothing less than 15000 Okay, good night, Mark. Because you have a greatness in you, Biff. Remember that? All kinds of greatness. Sleep well, Biff, darling. I'm going to get married, Mom. I wanted to tell you. Go to sleep, dear. I just wanted to tell you. Keep up the good work. You remember that Evans Field game? Championship of the city. Just rest. Should I sing to you? Yeah, sing to me. And when that team came out, he was the tallest, remember? Yes. And in gold. Like a young god. Hercules. Something like that. And the sun. The sun all around him. Remember how he waved to me right up from the field? With representatives of three colleges standing by? And the buyers I brought? And the cheers when he came out. Lobo! Lobo! God almighty, he'll be great yet. A star like that. Magnificent. Can never really fade away. Willie, what has he got against you? Huh? I'm so tired. Don't talk anymore. Will you ask Howard to let you work in New York? First thing in the morning. Everything's going to be all right. Biff is standing in the hall. Something draws him to the cellar. He searches behind the gas heater and draws out a length of rubber tubing. It is real. It is there. Between disgust and determination, he wraps the tubing around his hand, then goes up the stairs to his own room. As Willie, in bed, stares through the window, plunging down his gulf of dreams. Gee, look at the moon moving between the buildings.
wonderful coffee. Well, it's a meal in itself. Oh, let me fix you some eggs. Ah, take a breath. You look so rested, dear. I slept like a dead one. First time in months. Imagine sleeping till 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Boys left nice and early, eh? Oh, they were out of here by 8 o'clock. Good work. It was so thrilling to see them leaving together. Jeff was very changed this morning. His whole attitude seemed to be hopeful. Couldn't wait to get downtown to see Oliver. He's heading for a change. There's no question about it. It simply takes certain men longer to get solidified. Gee, you know, on the way home tonight, I'd like to buy some seeds. Oh, that'd be wonderful. But not enough sun gets back there. Nothing will grow anymore. Here yeah, you wait, kid. Before it's all over, we're going to have a little place out in the country. I'll raise some vegetables, a couple of chickens. Oh, you'll do it yet, dear. They'll get married and come out for a weekend. I'll build a little guest house. Yeah. Because I, I got so many fine tools, all I need is a little lumber and some peace of mind. Yes. I could build two guest houses and they'd both come. You're going to talk to Howard today, dear? Oh, I'm going to put it to him straight and simple. He's just got to take me off the road. And, Willie, don't forget to ask him for a little advance because we've got the insurance premium. It's the grace period That's now. 100? 108 68 because we're a little short again. Hey, why are we short? Well, you had that motor job on the car, and you got one more payment on the refrigerator. But it just broke again. <laughs> it's oldie. I told you we should have bought a well-advertised machine. Charlie bought a General Electric. It's 20 years old, and it's still good. Son of a gun. <laughs> Who ever heard of a Hastings refrigerator? <laughs> well, once in my life, I'd like to own something outright before it's broken. No, I'm really? always in a race with the junkyard. <laughs> Just finished payment for the car, and it's on its last legs. Oh, really? Refrigerator consumes belts like a damn maniac. <laughs> they time those things. They time them so that when they're finally paid for, they're used up. <laughs> well, all told, about $200 would carry us through, dear. But that includes the last payment on the mortgage. After this payment, Willie, the house belongs to us. Well, that's a great thing to weather a 25-year mortgage. It's is an accomplishment. All the cement, the lumber, the reconstruction I put into this house. There ain't a crack to be found in it anymore. Well, it served its purpose. What it? purpose? Some stranger comes along, moves in. That's that. If only Biff would take this house and raise a family. Well... I'll be home early. Goodbye. It's late. Willie, I forgot. You're supposed to meet them for dinner. Me? Frank's Chop House, 48th Street and 6th Avenue. Biff came to me this morning, Willie. He said, tell Dad we want to blow him to a big meal. Oh. Be there 6 o'clock, dear. You and your two boys are going to have dinner. Gee whiz, that's really something. I'm going to knock that Howard for a loop. I'll get an advance, and I'll come home with a New York job. Now I'm going to do it. Oh, that's the spirit, I'll Willie. I'll never sit behind the wheel of a car for the rest of my life. It's changing, Willie. I can feel it changing. <laughs> Beyond the question. Goodbye. I'm late. Be careful on the subway stairs, dear. What happened, Willie? What are you doing here? Well, Howard... You didn't crack up again, did you? Oh, no, no. Jeez, you had me worried there for a minute. Well, what's the trouble? Well, tell you the truth, Howard... I've come to the decision that I'd rather not travel anymore. I'll tell you why, Howard. Speaking frankly between the two of us, I'm just a little tired. Oh, I can understand that, Willie. Uh -huh. But you're a road man, Willie, and we do a road business. We've only got a, a half dozen salesmen on the floor here. Well, look, it isn't a question of whether I can sell merchandise, is it? No, but it's a business, kid, and everybody's got to pull his own weight. Hey, let me tell you a story, but Howard. But you got to admit... Business is business. Well, business is definitely business. But listen for a minute, because you don't understand. When I was a boy, 18, 19, I was already on the road. And there was a question in my mind whether selling had a future for me. Because, you see, in those days, I had a yearning to go to Alaska. There had been three gold strikes in one month in Alaska, and I thought I'd like to go out for the ride, as you might say. You know what say? Oh, yeah. My father lived many years in Alaska. <laughs> he was an adventurous man. We got quite a little streak of self-reliance in our family, and I thought I'd like to go out with my older brother and try to locate him, maybe settle in the north of the old man. And I was almost decided to go when I met a salesman in the Parker house. His name was Dave Singleman. He was 84 years old, and he drummed merchandise in 31 states. And old Dave, he'd go up to his room, you understand, put on his green velvet slippers, I'll never forget, pick up the phone, call the buyers. And without leaving his room at the age of 84, he made his living. Well, when I saw that, I realized that selling was the greatest career a man could want. Because what could be more satisfying 
than to be able to go at the age of 84 into 20, 30 different cities, pick up a phone, and be remembered, and loved, and helped by so many different people. You know, when he died, and by the way, he died the death of a salesman, in his green velvet slippers in the smoker of the New York, New Haven, and Hartford going into Boston. But when he died, there were hundreds of salesmen and buyers at his funeral. Things were sad on a lot of trains for months after that. In those days, there was personality in it, Howard. There was respect and, 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 and comradeship and gratitude in it. Today, it's all cut and dry. There's no chance to bring friendship to bear or personality. They don't know me anymore. That's just the thing, Willie. If I had f f $40 a week... That's all I need. Forty dollars, Howard. Kid, I can't take blood from a stone. Now, Howard, the year Al Smith was nominated, your father came to me. I've got to see some I'm people, kid. I'm talking about your father. There were promises made in this office. You mustn't tell me I've got people to see. I put 34 years into this firm, and now I can't pay my insurance. You can't eat the orange and throw the peel away. A man's not a piece of fruit. You pay attention. Your father, in the year 1928, I had a big year. I averaged $170 a week in commissions. Oh, you never averaged I any... averaged $170 a week in the year 1928. Your father came to me, or rather was right here in this office, behind this desk, and he put his hand on my well, shoulder. Well, hey, look, there's no New York job in this firm for you. As a matter of fact... All right, Howard, all right. I'll go to Boston. Well, you can't go to Boston for us. Huh? I cannot go. I don't want you to represent us. I've been meaning to tell you for a long time now. Howard, are you firing me? I think you need a good long rest, Willie. Howard. When you feel better, come back and we'll see if we can work something yeah, out. Yeah, but i got to earn money, Howard. I'm an open Where are your sons? Why don't your sons give you a hand? Well, I, I, I can't throw myself on my sons. I'm not a cripple. Oh, look, kid, I'm busy this morning. Howard, Howard, you, you, you got to let me go to Boston. I've got a line of people to see this morning. Take five minutes, pull yourself together, and then go home, will you? I need the office, Wooly. Ben. I've got to talk to you, Ben. How did you do it? Well, now look here, will you? I bought Timberland in Alaska. And I need a man to look after things for me. God, Timberland. Me and my boys in those grand outdoors. Linda. Linda. He's got a proposition for me in Alaska. But he's got a beautiful job right here. My old man Wagner told him only the other day that if he keeps it up, he'll be a member of the firm. Didn't he, Willie? Uh, sure, sure, sure. After all, I, I am building something with this firm, Ben. And if a man is building something, he must be on the right track, mustn't he? What are you building? Lay your hand on it. Where is it? Why, hey, look at this boy. Biff, come here. Without a penny to his name, three great universities are begging for him. And from there, the sky's the limit. Because it's not what you do, Ben. It's who you know. The smile on your face. It's contacts, Ben. Contacts. The whole wealth of Alaska passes over the lunch table at the Commodore Hotel. And that's the wonder, the wonder of this country, Ben, that a man can end with diamonds here on the basis of being liked. And that's why, Biff, when you get out in that field today, it's important, boy, because thousands of people will be rooting for you and loving you. And Ben, when he walks into a business office, his name will sound out like a bell. All the doors will open. I've seen it, Ben. I've seen it a thousand times. You can't feel it in your hand like timber, but it's there. Goodbye, William. But, Ben, am I right? Don't you think I'm right? I value your advice. There's a new continent at your doorstep, William. You could walk out rich. We'll do it here, Ben. You hear me? We're going to do it here. Are you ready, Biff? Ready to go, Pop. Every muscle's ready. You're coming home this afternoon, captain of the all-scholastic championship team of the city of New York. I got it, Pop. And remember, pal, when I take off my helmet, that touchdown's for you. Let's go. Ebbets Field next stop. This is the greatest day of your life. In reality, Willie has left his boss's office, but is still in the grip of his dream. A few blocks away, in Charlie's office, 
Bernard waits to see his father, whose secretary hurries in. Let's go. 80,000 people right between Say, Bernard, will you go out in the hall? What is that noise? Who is it? Mr. Lohman. He just got off the elevator. Who's he arguing with? Nobody. There's nobody with him. I can't deal with him anymore, and your father gets all upset every time he comes. I've got a lot of typing to do, and your father's waiting to sign it. Will you see him? Touchdown! Oh. <laughs> Jenny? <laughs> Good to see you, Jenny. Hiya. Working or still honest? I'm fine, Mr. Lohman. Hello, Uncle Willie. Bernard. Well, look who's here. How are you? Good to see you. What are you doing here? Oh, just stop by to see Pop and get off her feet till the train leaves. I'm uh, going down to Washington in a few minutes. Uh-huh. Uh, is he in? Yes, he's uh, in his office with the accountant. Sit down. What are you going to do in Washington? Oh, just a case I've got there, Willie. What's Biff doing? Dad tells me he's in town. Well, he, he was doing very big things in the West. But then he, he decided to establish himself here. Very big. Uh, we're having dinner. Didn't I hear your wife had a boy? That's right, our second. Two boys. Oh, what do you know? What uh, kind of a deal has Biff got? Oh, uh, Bill Oliver, the big sporting goods man. He, he wants Biff very badly. You call him in from the West. Long distance, carte blanche, special delivery. You uh, still with the old firm, Willie? Huh? I'm... <laughs> I'm overjoyed to see how you made the grade, Bernard. Overjoyed. It's an encouraging thing to see a young man really... Oh, things are big for Biff, too. Very. Bernard. What is it, Billy? What? What's the secret? What secret? How did you... Why didn't he ever catch on? I wouldn't know that, Willie. Well, you were his friend, his boyhood friend. Something I don't understand about it. His life ended after that Ebbets Field game. From the age of 17, nothing good ever happened to him. Willie, there's just one thing I've always wanted to ask you. When he was supposed to graduate and the uh, math teacher flunked him... He flunked the subject. And then he... He laid down and died like a hammer hit him. Willie, I... I remember it was June and our grades came out and he'd flunked math. That... Teacher ruined his life. No, no. Biff was ready to enroll in summer school. He was. He wasn't beaten by it at all. But then, Willie, he disappeared from the block for almost a month, and I got the idea that he'd gone up to New England to see you. Did he have a talk with you then? Willie. Yeah. He came to Boston. What about it? What happened in Boston, Willie? Nothing. What do you mean, what happened? What's that got to do with anything? Hey, hey, you're going to miss that train. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Goodbye, Willie. And don't worry about it. Goodbye, boy. How do you like this, kid? Going to argue a case in front of the Supreme Court? Stop. No. Supreme Court? I got to run. Bye, Dad. Knock him dead, Bernard. The Supreme Court. And he never even mentioned it. He don't have to. He's going to do it. You never told him what to do, did you? You never took any interest in him. My salvation is, and I never took any interest in anything. Oh, uh, here's some money, uh, $50. But, Charlie, look, I got my insurance to pay. If you can manage it, I need $110. I I could throw it out of the bank, but Linda would know, and I... Sit down, Willie. I'm I'm keeping strict account, remember. I'll pay every penny back. Now, listen to me. I I want you to know I appreciate it. Willie, what are you doing? What the hell is going on in your head? Why, I say... I we... offered you a job. You can make $50 a week, and I won't send you out on the road. I got a job. Without pay. What kind of a job is a job without pay? Now, look, kid, enough is enough. I'm no genius, but I know when I'm being insulted. Insulted? Why don't you want to work for me? But I just told you. What's the matter with you? I got a job. Well, how much do you need, Willie? Charlie, I'm strapped. I'm strapped. I was just fired. Howard fired you. Yeah, that snot nose. Imagine, I named him. I named him Howard. Willie, when are you going to realize you named him Howard, but you can't sell that? The only thing you got in this world is what you can sell. 
And the funny thing is that you're a salesman. You don't even know that. Oh, I always thought otherwise. I always felt that if a man was impressive and well-liked... Why not... must everybody like you? Who liked J.P. Morgan? Was he impressive? In a Turkish bath, he looked like a butcher. But with his pockets on, he was very well-liked. Now, listen, Willie, I know you don't like me, and nobody can say I'm in love with you. I'll give you a job because... Uh, well, just for the hell of it. Let's put it that way now. Uh, come on, what do you say? I, I, I can't work for you, Charlie. What, are you jealous of me? I, I can't work for you, that's all. Now, just don't ask me why. You've been jealous of me all your life, you damn fool. Here. Pay your insurance. I'm keeping strict accounts. I've got some work to do. Now take care of yourself. And pay your insurance. <laughs> God, it's funny, you know... After all the highways and the trains and the appointments and the years, you end up worth more dead than alive. Well, ain't nobody's worth nothing dead. Did you hear what I said? Willie! Huh? Oh, uh, wish me luck, Charlie. Biff saw Bill Oliver today. Good luck. Charlie, you're the only friend I got. Isn't that a... Remarkable thing. In a small restaurant, Biff arrives and finds Happy waiting for him. Well, did you see Oliver? Yeah, I saw him all right. Now, look, I want to tell Dad a couple of things when he gets here, and I want you to help me. Yeah, well, what, is he going to back you? Are you crazy? You're out of your head, do you know that? Why? What happened? I, I did a terrible thing today, Half. It's been the strangest day I've went through. I'm, I'm numb, I swear. You mean, you mean he wouldn't see you? I waited for him for six hours, see? All day. Finally, about five o'clock, he comes out. Didn't remember who I was or anything. Did you tell him my Florida idea? He walked away. I saw him for one minute. I got so mad, I could have torn the walls down. Oh, what'd you do? Well, he left, see? And then the, the secretary went out. I was all alone in the waiting room. I, I don't know what came over me, Hap. The next thing I know, I'm, I'm in his office. Panel walls and everything, and I... I can't explain it. I... Hap, I took his fountain pen. Jeez. He catch you? I ran out. I ran down all 11 flights, and I, I ran and ran and... That was awful dumb. What'd you do that for? I don't know. I I just want to take something. I, you got to help me, Hap. I'm going to tell Pop. You're crazy? What for? He's got to understand that I'm not the man somebody lends that kind of money to. He thinks I've been spiting him all these years and it's eating him up. Yeah, that's just it. You got to tell him something nice. I can't. Yeah, say you got a luncheon date with Oliver tomorrow. So what do I do tomorrow? You leave the house tomorrow and come back at night and say Oliver's thinking it over. And he thinks it over for a couple of weeks and gradually it fades away and nobody's at worse. It'll go on forever. Dad is never so happy as when he's looking forward to something. Here he comes. Hello, Scout. Hey. I haven't been here in years. Yeah. Uh, sit down, Pop. Uh, have a drink. Sure, I don't mind. Let's get a load on, huh? Hey, you look worried. Well, what happened, boy? Everything go all right? Well, pal, I had an experience today. Terrific, Pop. <laughs> so, well, what happened? Well, I'm going to tell you everything from first to last. It's been a strange day. Uh, I had to wait quite a while for him, you see. Oliver? Yeah, yeah, Oliver. Uh, all day, as a matter of cold fact. And a lot of instances, Pop, facts about my past life kept coming back to me. Now, now, who was it, Pop? Who was it that said that I was a salesman for all of them? Well, you were. No, no, Dad, no. I was a shipping clerk. But you were practically... Dad, I don't know who said it first, but I was never a salesman for Bill Oliver. What are you talking about? Now, let's hold on to the facts tonight, Pop. We're not going to get anywhere bullying around, see? I was a shipping clerk. All right, now you listen to me. Well, why don't you let me finish? I'm that... not interested in any stories about the past or any crap of that kind. Because the woods are burning, boys, do you understand? There's a big blaze going on all around. I was fired today. How could you be? I was fired. And I'm looking for a little good news to tell your mother because the woman has waited and the woman has suffered. The gist of it is that I haven't got a story left in my head, Bib, so don't give me any lectures about facts and aspects. I'm not interested. Now, now, well, tell me, what, what, what have you got to say to me, huh? Did you see Oliver? Gee, Oh, you mean you didn't go up there? Sure, sure he went up there, Pop. Yeah, yeah, I did. I saw him. 
How could they fire you? What kind of a welcome did he give you? Well, once you even let you work on a commission. I'm out, so tell me. Did he give you a warm welcome? Sure, Pop. Oh, sure. Well, well, it was <laughs> you know, I, I was wondering if he'd remember you. Imagine, Hap. Man doesn't see him for 10, 12 years, and he gives him that kind of a welcome. Pop, look, you know look, why I... he remembered you, don't you? Because you impressed him in those days. Let's talk quietly and get this down to the facts, well, huh? Well, all right, what happened? Oh, this is great news, Biff. Did he take you into his office, or did you talk in the waiting room? Well, he came in, you see. Uh, what did I... he say? Bet you he threw uh, his arm around you. Well, he kind of... Oh, he's a fine man and a hard man to see, you know. Oh, I know. Is that where you had the drinks, Biff? Yeah, he gave me a couple. Oh, no, no, I, uh, I had a he drink here. He told him my Florida idea. Uh, don't interrupt. Oh, how do you react to the Florida idea? Dad, will you give me a minute to explain? Oh, I've been waiting for you to explain since I sat down here. Now, what happened? He took you into his office, and then what? I talked, and, and he listened, you uh-huh. see. He... And he's famous for the way he listens, you know. What was his answer? He had... Dad, you're not letting me tell you what I want to tell you. Ah, uh, you didn't see him, did you? I did see him. No, what did you do? Insult him or something? You insulted no, him, didn't you? you? let me out of it, will you? Just let me out of will it. You, will you tell me what happened? Mrs. Lohman! Mrs. Lohman! Tell him what happened. Shut it. up and leave me alone. Oh, no. You had to go and flunk math. What math? What are you talking about? Mrs. Lohman! Mrs. Lohman! Math, math, math! Take it easy, Pop. If you hadn't flunked math, you'd be all set by now. Mrs. Lohman, Biff flunked math. No. Birdbone flunked him. They won't graduate him. But they've got to. He's going to the university of... Where is he? Biff? Biff? No, he left. He went to Grand Central. Grand Central? He must have gone to Boston. Is Uncle Willie in Boston? Maybe Willie can talk to his teacher. Oh, that poor, poor boy. So I'm washed up with all of it. He understands. Have you been listening to uh, me? Oh, sure. If I hadn't flunked. Flunked what? What are you talking about? Don't you blame everything on me. I didn't flunk math. You did. What pen? Yeah, it was awful dumb, Biff. A pen like that's worth maybe... You took Oliver's pen? Dad, I just explained it you to you. You stole Bill Oliver's fountain pen? No, no I, I didn't exactly steal it. That's what I've been explaining to yeah, you. Yeah, he had it in his hand. Just an Oliver walked in. He got nervous and stuck it in his pocket. My God, Biff! Well, I never intended to do it, Dad. Standish arms. Good evening. I'm not in my room. Dad. What's the matter? Ringing Mr. Lohman for you. No, no, I'm not there. Stop it. Yeah, Dad, I'll make good. I'll make good, Dad. Now, sit down. Uh, sit down. Ah, no, you're no good. You're no good for anything. No, I am. I am. I'll, I'll find something else. You understand? Now, don't worry about anything. Talk to me, Dad. Mr. Lohman does not answer. Shall I page him? No, no, no. Oh, pop, Pop, listen. Listen to me. I'm telling you something good. Uh, Oliver talked to his partner about the Florida idea. You listening? He, she talked to his partner, and he came to me, and I'm going to be all right. You hear? Dad, listen to me. He said it was just a question of the amount. Well, then, then you got it. It's going to be terrific, Pop. Oh, 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 you got it, haven't you? You got it, you got no, it. No, 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 no. Uh, look, Pop, I'm supposed to have lunch with him tomorrow, and I'm telling you this so you can understand I can make a good impression. And I'll make good, Dad, but I can't go tomorrow. Why not? You simply... The pen, the give pen. It I... him, give it back to him and tell him it was an oversight. Sure, you have lunch tomorrow. I can't then. say that. We're doing a crossword puzzle and accidentally used his pen. Listen, kid, I, I took those balls years ago. Now I walk in with his fountain pen. Now he clinches it, don't you see? I can't face him like that. I'll try somewhere else. Paging, Mr. Lowe. Don't you want to be uh, anything? Pop, how can I go? You back? don't want to be anything. Is that what's behind Dad, it? Dad, don't take it that way. Do you think it was easy walking to see Bill Oliver after all I've done to him? A team of horses couldn't have dragged me back to Bill Oliver. Now, why'd you go? Why did I go? Yeah. Why did I go? Look at you. Look at what's become of you. Biff, <laughs> you're going to that lunch tomorrow, or I uh... can't go. I've got no appointment. Biff, you're fighting me? Dad, don't take it that way, damn it. You rotten little louse, are you spiting me? Someone's at the door, I'm no really? good. Can't you see what I am? Hey, hey, you're in a restaurant. I'll cut it out, both of you. Hey, here's a girl. Sit down, girls. Hey, Pop, we met some friends before you showed up. <laughs> I guess we might as well. This is Letta. Willie, aren't you going to wake her? Hi, you, Letta. <laughs> Sit down. What do you drink? Oh, Letta might not be able to stay long. I got to get up very early tomorrow. I got jury duty. I'm so excited. Were you fellas ever on a jury? No, but I've been in front of them. <laughs> this is my father Sit down with us, Pop Yeah, yeah, sit him down, Biff Come on, Slugger Drink us under the table To hell with it Come on, sit down, pal Willie, aren't you going to answer the door? Hey, where are you going? Open the door The door? The, the, the washroom, the door, where's the door? Just go straight down Willie, Willie, are you going to get up? Get up, get up I think it's wonderful you bring your daddy along. Oh, he isn't really your father. Miss Forsyth, you've just seen a prince walk by. 
A fine, troubled prince. A hard-working, unappreciated prince. A pal, you understand? A good companion. Always for his boys. Come on, Biff, gather around. Where would you like to go? Don't you give a damn from Hap? What are you talking about? I'm the one I who... sense it. You don't give a damn about him. Look at this rubber hose I found in the cellar. How can you better let it go on? Me? Who goes away? Who runs yeah, off? Yeah, but he doesn't mean anything to you. You could help him. I can't. Don't you understand what I'm talking about? He's going to kill himself. Don't you know that? Don't I know it? Me? Hap, help him. Help me. I, I can't bear to look at his face. Stop laughing. Will you stop? Aren't you going to answer the door? Whoever it is is going to wake the whole hotel. I'm not expecting anybody. Mm, you know you ruined me, Willie? <laughs> From now on, whenever you come to the office, I'll see that you go right through to the buyers. Come on inside, drummer boy. It's silly to be dressing in the middle of the night. Aren't you going to answer the door? I don't know. It's a mistake. Well, then tell him to go away. There's nobody there. It's getting on my nerves, Willie. There is so somebody standing out there, and that's just getting on my nerves. All right, all right. Stay in the bathroom and don't come out. It may be that new room clerk. Biff! Why didn't you answer? Well, what are you doing in Boston? Well, why didn't you answer? I've been knocking for five minutes. I called you on the phone. I, and... I, I just heard. I was in the bathroom with the door shut. Anything happen home? No, no. Hey, Dad, I, I... I let you down. What do you mean? Well, I... I, I flunked math. Not for the term. Yeah, the term. I haven't got enough credits to graduate. You mean to say Bernard wouldn't give you the answers? Well, he did. He tried, but I, I only got a 61. And they wouldn't give you four points? Brent Baum refused, absolutely. I begged him, Pop, but he wouldn't listen to me. You, you got to talk to him before they close the school. W would you, Pop? He'd, he'd like you. Oh, you, you know the way you could talk. Huh? You're on. You're on. Yeah. We'll drive right back. <laughs> oh, Dad, good work. I'm sure he'll change it for now, you. You go right downstairs and tell the clerk I'm checking out. Go right down. Yes. <laughs> Hurry downstairs and... Hey, hey, is somebody in there? No, no, that's next door. Oh, somebody got in your bed. <laughs> oh, it's in the next room. There's a party. Oh, can I come in? Oh, there, there's something in the bathtub, Willie, and it's moving. Uh, well, <laughs> then you better go back to your room. Uh, they must be finished painting by now. Uh, painting her room, Biff, and I, I let her take a shower here. Uh, go back, go back. I've got to get dressed, Willie. I can't just But you walk. get out of here. You can't... Uh, uh, this is Miss Francis, Biff. Uh, she's a buyer. They're painting her room. Uh, go back, Miss Francis. Go back. But my clothes. I can't go out naked in the hall. Out of here? Go back, go back. And where's my stockings? You promised me stockings, Willie. I have no stockings well, here. Well, you had two boxes of size nine shears for me, and I want them. Well, here, take them. For God's sake, get out of here. I just hope there's nobody in the hall. That's all I hope. Are you football or baseball, young man? Football. That's me, too. Good night. Well, better get going. I want to get to the school first thing in the morning. You get my suits out of the closet, Biff, and I'll get my valise. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, she's a buyer. She buys for J.H. Simmons, and she lives down the hall. The paint... Well, <laughs> you don't imagine... Oh, now, listen, pal. She's just a buyer. She sees merchandise in a room, and they have to keep it looking just... So... All right. Get my suits and stop <laughs> crying. Biff, I gave you an order. Is that what you do when I give you an order? How dare you cry? When you grow up, you'll understand about these things. You mustn't, you mustn't overemphasize a thing like this. I'll see Birnbaum first thing in the morning. Never mind. Never mind. He's going to give you those points. I'll see to it. He wouldn't listen to you. He certainly will listen to me. You need those points for the U of Virginia. I'm not going there. Well, if he won't change the marks, we'll make him up in summer school. You've got all summer. <laughs> oh, my boy. <laughs> She's nothing to me, Biff. I was lonely. I was terribly lonely. You gave her mum stockings. I gave you an order. Don't touch me, you liar. I apologize for that. You fake, you phony little fake, you fake, you I fake. I gave you an order. Come back here, I'll whip you. Biff, come back here. I gave you an order. <coughs> Mr. Loman. <laughs> Mr. Loman. Let's pick it up. Let's pick it up, Mr. Loman. Huh? Stanley, 
Did my, uh, my boys order for me? Your boys left with the chippies, Mr. Loman. They said they'll see you home. Can you make it, Mr. Loman? Oh, sure. I can, I can make it. Do I look all right? Sure. You look all right, Mr. Loman. Yeah. Here's a dollar. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Loman. Your son's paid me. No, no. You take it. You're a good boy. You don't have to do it, Mr. Loman. You see... I don't need it anymore. Tell me, is there a seed store in the neighborhood? Seeds? You mean like to plant, yeah, Mr. Loman? Yeah, carrots, peas. Oh, well, there's hardware stores on 6th Avenue, Mr. Loman. But it may be too late now. Well, then I gotta hurry. I gotta get some seeds. I've gotta get some seeds right away. Nothing planted. I don't have a thing in the ground. Hey, where's Pop? Get out of my sight. Get out of here, both of you. I want to see the little boss. You're not going near him. Where is he? You invite him for dinner. He looks forward to it all day, and then you desert him there. There's no stranger you'd do that to. Now, look, Mom. Did you go to women tonight? You and your lousy rotten... Mom, all we did was follow Biff around, trying to cheer him up. Get out of here, both of you, and don't come back. I won't have you tormenting him anymore. Go on, get your things together. A pair of animals. Not one, not another living soul would have had the cruelty to walk out on that man in a restaurant. Is that what he said? He didn't have to say anything. He was so humiliated he nearly limped when he came in. Good, Mom. He had a great time with... You. You didn't even go to see if he was all right. No, it didn't. Didn't do a damn thing. Left him babbling in a toilet. You louse, you... Now you hit it on the nose, the scum of the earth, and you're looking at him. Get out of here. I gotta talk to the boss, Mom. Where is he? You're not going near him. Get out of this We're house. We're going to have an abrupt conversation, him and me. You're not going to talk to him. What's he doing out there? He's planting the garden. No? Oh, my God. Carrots, a quarter inch apart. Grows, one foot grow. One foot beets. Lettuce, one foot. What up? Proposition. <laughs> terrific, terrific. Cause she suffered, Ben. That woman suffered. You understand me? A man can't go out the way he came in. A man's got to wear up to something. You can't. You can't. You've got to consider now. Don't answer so quick. Remember, it's a guaranteed $20,000 proposition. Now look, Ben. I want you to go through the ins and the outs of this with me because I've nobody to talk to. And the woman has suffered. You hear me? What's the proposition? $20,000 on the barrel head. Guaranteed. Guilt edged. You understand? You don't want to make a fool of yourself. They might not honor the policy. But how can they dare refuse? Didn't I work like a coolie to meet every premium on the nose? And now they don't pay off? Impossible. It's called a cowardly thing, will you? Why... Does it take more guts to stand here the rest of my life ringing up a zero? That's a point, William. And 20,000? There is something one can feel with the hand. It's there. Oh, that's the whole beauty of it, Ben. I see it like a diamond shining in the dark, hard and rough that I can pick up and touch in my hand. Not like, like an appointment. This wouldn't be another damn fool appointment, Ben. And it changes all the aspects. Because he thinks I'm nothing, you see. And he spites me. But the funeral... Pen, that funeral will be massive. They'll come from Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire. All the old-timers with their strange license plate. That boy will be thunderstruck, Ben. Because he never realized. I am known. Rhode Island, New York, New Jersey, I am known, Ben. And he'll see it now with his own eyes, once and for all. He'll see what I am, Ben. He's in for a shock, that boy. He'll call you a coward. Huh? Oh, no, no, that'd be terrible. Yes, and a damn fool. No, 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 he mustn't. I won't have it. He'll hate you, William. Oh, God, Ben. How do we get back to the great time? used to be so full of light and comradeship, sleigh riding in the winter, 
and the ruddiness on his cheeks. And always some kind of good news coming up. Always something nice coming up ahead. Never even let me carry my valise in the house. And simonizing, simonizing that little red car. Why? Why can't I give him something and not have him hate me? Let me think about it. I still have a little time. <laughs> Remarkable proposition. But you've got to be sure you're not making a fool of yourself. I'm saying goodbye to you, Pop. I'm not coming back anymore. You're not going to see Oliver tomorrow? I've got no appointment. But he put his arm around you, and you have no appointment. Pop, get this now, will you? Every time I've left, it's been a fight that sent me out of here. Today I realized something about myself, and I tried to explain it to you, and I... Well, I, I guess I'm just not smart enough to make any sense out of it for you. To hell with whose fault it is or anything like that. Let's just wrap it up, huh? Come on in. We'll, we'll tell Mom. No, no, I don't want to see her. Come on. No, let me go. I'll go in myself. Did you plant the year? It's all right. We had it out. I'm going away and I'm not writing anymore. I think that's the best way, Willie. Because there's no use drawing it out. You'll just never get along. People ask where I am or what I'm doing. You don't know and you don't care. That way it'll be off your mind and you can start brightening up again. That clears it, doesn't it? Yeah. You going to wish me luck, Scott? What do you say? Shake his hand, Willie. There's no necessity to mention the pen at all, you know. I've got no appointment, Dad. Put his arm around. Dad, you're never going to see what I am, so what's the use of arguing, huh? If I strike oil, I'll send you a check. Meantime, forget I'm alive. Spite, see? Shake hands. No, Dad. not my hand. I was hoping not to go this well, way. Well, this is the way you're going. Goodbye. And may you run in hell if you leave this house. Exactly. What is it you want from me? I want you to know that on the train, in the mountain, in the valley, wherever you go... That you're cutting down your life for spite. No, no, I... Spite! I... That's the word of your undoing. And when you're down and not remember what did it, when you're running beside some railroad track, remember and don't you dare blame it on me. I'm not blaming it on I you. I'll not take the rap for this, That's you just hear? what I've been telling you. You're trying to put a knife into me. Don't think I don't know what you're doing. All right, phony, let's lay it on the line. Did you ever see this before? Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. Leave it there, don't move it. What's that? It's a rubber hose. I never saw that. You saw it. The mice didn't bring it in the cellar. What is this supposed to do? Make a hero out of you? Is this supposed to make me feel sorry for you? I've never heard of it. There'll be no pity for you, hear me? No pity. I, I hear the spite? No, you're going to hear the truth. What you are and what I am. Stop it! Hey, the the man to know who you are. The man is going to know. We never told the truth for ten minutes in this we house. We always told the truth. No, you big blower. You the assistant buyer. You're one of two assistants to the assistant. Well, I'm practically You're practically assistant. full of it. We all are, and I'm through with it. Now, hear this, Willie. This is me. I know you. You know, I had no address for three months. I stole a suit in Kansas City and I was in jail. No, you Stop don't. crying, I'm through. I suppose that's my fault. And I stole myself out of every good job since high school. And whose fault is that? And I never got anywhere because you blew me so full of hot air I could never stand taking orders from anybody. That's whose fault it is. I oh, hear that. Last time you heard that. I had to be boss big shot in two weeks and I'm through with it. And hang yourself. For spite, hang yourself. No, nobody's hanging himself, Willie. I ran down 11 flights a day with a pen in my hand, you hear me? And suddenly I stopped. I stopped right in the middle of that office building and I saw the sky. I saw the things I love in this world. The work and the food and the time to sit down and smoke. And I looked at the pen in my hand and I said, what the hell am I grabbing for? Why am I trying to be something I don't want to be? What am I doing in an office building? Making a contemptuous begging fool out of myself. When all I want is out there waiting for me. The minute I say I know who I am. Why can't I say that? The door of your life is wide open. Pop! I'm a dime a dozen and so are you. I'm not a dime a dozen. I'm Willie Loman. Sure, Biff Loman. I'm a dollar an hour. I've tried seven states and I couldn't raise it. A buck an hour, do you gather my meaning? I'm not a leader of men, Willie, neither are you. You're never anything but a hard-working drummer who landed in the ash can with all the rest of them. And I'm not bringing home any prizes anymore. And you're going to stop waiting for me to bring them home. You vengeful, spiteful... Oh, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Can't you understand that? There's no spite in it. Oh, I'm just what I am. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Why is he crying? Will you let me go? Will you take that phony dream and burn it before something happens? 
Put up the bed. I'll go in the morning. Isn't that remarkable? Biff! He likes me. He loves you, Willie. Always did, Pop. Oh, Biff! He cried. Cried to me. That boy... That boy is going to be magnificent. Yes, outstanding with 20,000 behind him. Come to bed, Willie. It's all settled now. Yes, we'll sleep. Go to sleep, Hap. And it does take a great kind of man to crack the jungle. I, I, I'm going to get married, Pop. Don't forget it. I'm changing everything. I, I'm going to run that department before the year is up. you see, Mom. Good night, Pop. Come, dear. One must go in to fetch a diamond out. I just want to get settled down, Linda. Let me sit alone for a little. No, no, I want you upstairs. In a few minutes, Linda. I couldn't sleep right now. Oh, go on, kid. You look awful tired. Not like an appointment at all. A diamond is rough and hard to the touch. Go on. I'll be right up. I think this is the only way, Willie. Sure. It's the best thing. Best thing. Everything's going to be... Go on, kid. Get to bed. You look so tired. Come right up. Two minutes. Loves me. Always loved me. Isn't that a remarkable thing? Ben, he'll worship me for it. The jungle is dark, but full of diamonds. Can you imagine that magnificence with $20,000 in his pocket? Willie, come up! Ah, yes, I'm coming. It's very smart. You realize that, don't you, sweetheart? Even Ben sees it. Bye. Imagine. When the mail comes, he'll be ahead of an hour again. A perfect proposition all around. Did you see how he cried to me? Oh, if I could kiss him, Ben. Time, William, time. Oh, Ben, I always knew one way or another we were going to make it, Biff and I. The boat will be late. And now when you kick off, boy, I want a 70-yard boot. Get down the field under the ball. And when you hit, hit low and hit hard. Because it's important, boy. There are all kinds of important people in the stands. And the first thing you know... Ben. Ben. Ben, where do I... Ben. How do I... Well, are you coming up? It was a quiet funeral. There was Linda and the boys and, of course, Charlie and Bernard. No crowds, no messages, as they stood beside the grave. He had the wrong dreams, all, all wrong. Charlie, the man, didn't know who he was. Nobody dares blame this man. You don't understand. Willie was a salesman. And for a salesman, there's no rock bottom to the life. He don't put a bolt to a nut. He don't tell you the law or give you medicine. He's a man way out there in the blue, riding on a smile and a shoe shine. And when they start not smiling back, that's an earthquake. Then you get yourself a couple of spots on your hat, and you're finished. Nobody dares blame this man. A salesman has got a dream, boy. It comes with the territory. Let's go, Mom. I'll be with you in a minute. Go on, Charlie. 
I want to just for a minute. I never had a chance to say goodbye. Forgive me, Willie. I can't cry. I don't know what it is, but I can't cry. It just seems to me that you're away on another trip. I keep expecting you. Willie, why did you do it? I searched. Shouldn't I search? Shouldn't I search? And I can't understand it, Willie. I made the last payment on the house today. Today, dear. And there'll be nobody home. We're free and clear. Come home, Mom. We're free. <laughs> <laughs> 